Uh, in my presentation, I would like to talk about uh, widening the boundaries of bioethics um, and through a health humanities approach. And I'm uh, really happy that I uh, heard um, all of the almost all of the presentations uh, before my uh, mind, since uh, I can bound to uh, directly to, to Jonathan's and to Sohelius as well. Um, and you will see soon why and how. Um, concerning to uh, abortion and uh, human enhancement, for example, and concerning to uh, the health humanities uh, multidisciplinary way. Uh, I teach uh, medical ethics and bioethics, mostly uh, these two um, courses here at the university, um, at the medical school, and uh, that's the reason why I uh, uh, chose this topic and uh, the uh, potential uh, connection with health humanities uh, and uh, uh, showing uh, the connection and uh, the um, um, possible cooperation uh, between uh, these two um, fields. Uh, I would like to um, talk about the following uh, content in my presentation. So I would like to outline the potentially huge opportunities of teaching bio bioethics in the frame of health humanities and beyond. And uh, I will define the notion of bioethics and its connection to health humanities. And I would like to show its appearance in our educational system. And I will highlight the reasons why it could be considerable to make this knowledge widely accessible. Um, I show a few examples of meeting points and, and try to emphasize uh, the essence of them and the relationship between them. And at the end of my presentation, I summarize my conclusions and I give some ideas, uh, their implementation as well. Um, so uh, this is a, a self-made figure about uh, bioethics and where it is in the system of sciences. Uh, but uh, I guess it, uh, it can uh, help us to visual visualize uh, where should we uh, uh, imagine it. Um, so as we can see, ethics has two uh, separatable trends, um, descriptive, prescriptive and uh, method ethics or analytical ethics. And for us, a uh, prescriptive one uh, will be the uh, core and essential one. Uh, prescriptive ethic uh, is a normative philosophical school um, and it's an approach as well uh, that has to uh, parts applied in general ethics and uh, applied ethics uh, uses uh, the theories uh, of general ethics to uh, solve uh, moral issues concerning to uh, this one, what you can uh, see on the uh, slide as well. Uh, for example, uh, concerning to bioethics and other applied ethics, um, for instance, uh, business ethics or pedagogical ethics um, as well. And um, usually, um, uh, we distinguish three uh, parts, main parts of bioethics, modern medical ethics, animal ethics and environmental ethics, but it depends on the classification whether animal ethics is a, a unique one and an individual one or we uh, want to uh, talk about animal ethics under the uh, medical ethics um, topic. Uh, as we can see um, from these um, few thoughts and uh, through this uh, slide as well, bioethics is a multidisciplinary science that deals with the ethical issues of the living world. Um, it is a changing, expanding science, which is the consequence of the developing uh, sciences and technologies. And uh, that means that we have to sometimes re-examine uh, its, uh, its theories, its uh, solutions, and uh, improve them uh, concerning to uh, the new uh, scientific results as well. Uh, it is uh, known that we cannot talk about global bioethics because of certain differences, um, for example, cultural, uh, religious or societal. 
um, but there are consensus in few areas uh, such as human life, the duty to respect uh, human dignity, prohibition of slavery, informed consent, principle of self-determination and so on. But so sometimes few principles may conflict uh, with each other as we could uh, see it uh, in the previous uh, presentation as well. Um, and for example, maternal self-determination versus the right of uh, to the live of the uh, life of the fetus, or um, in case of end of life issues, an elimination of suffering versus uh, do not harm uh, principle of uh, modern medical ethics uh, or uh, the order uh, of the Bible. Uh, so we can see uh, sometimes uh, such a conflict. And uh, if we would like to uh, formulate the task of bioethics, um, it is to outline alternative possibilities and to rule out the unacceptable ones. Uh, so not uh, in all cases for to formulate generally accurate answers, solutions. And here we can realize its limits. Um, for, if we go on, uh, we can um, define medical ethics um, as um, it involves examining a specific problem using values, facts and uh, logic to decide what the best course of action should be. It analyzes uh, those questions uh, which appears or can be morally unclear during the medical care and furthermore it prescribes the suitable behavior during the medical practice. And um, uh, environmental ethics or ethics is a school which analyzes the moral relationship of the human and the environmental which is around it. Uh, this definition will be useful uh, for the upcoming, upcoming uh, uh, topics. Uh, that's the reason why I wanted to um, express them and formulate them. Um, and um, um, look at for a moment uh, for the uh, bioethics in the medical school uh, at our university and uh, um, the uh, availability of that. Um, and um, through this, uh, I start to connect to health humanities approach as well. Um, you can see that uh, we have compulsory and uh, optional courses, uh, of course, and uh, medical ethics uh, is compulsory for medical students and uh, compulsory for dentist students as a part of the course of medical ethics and behavioral scientists, uh, but uh, they can uh, learn it um, as optional course as well with a bit different um, content and uh, um, a syllab. And pharmacy students uh, can uh, learn it as optional one uh, and uh, about bioethics is uh, uh, can be said that it's an optional for each of the students at the faculty. Um, bioethics is about um, a wider uh, perspective of uh, moral issues as we saw in the previous definition and that's the reason why um, it is uh, not um, a compulsory one because it um, uh, adds, uh, for example, environmental ethical uh, issues to uh, to the uh, topics uh, that were discussed. And um, um, if we would like to uh, mention health humanities, um, uh, we can say, I mean, uh, from my point of view, that health humanities softens the strict frame of single sciences, or we can look at this like this with uh, introducing new approaches and connections uh, between each other. And uh, biotics is a part of uh, specific educational programs such as medicine, uh, biotechnology, so health sciences, and uh, we can meet uh, this course um, at uh, law studies or philosophy and religious studies as well. Uh, in uh, other educational uh, program, bioethics is not overrepresented or uh, doesn't appear at all. And uh, about health humanities, um, it is a kind of collection of sciences under an so-called umbrella view. These fields of science are about movie poetry, graphics, uh, theater, literature, anthropology, history, and the common fields with bioethics as philosophy, law, and so sociology, next to basic uh, medical sciences. 
uh, like biology and other uh, life sciences as well. Um, and I could continue the list uh, to reach a full collection, uh, but my aim uh, is not uh, this right now. Um, in my interpretation, health humanities is an approach. Um, and within this, among other participants, bioethics can be classified as one of its part as a scientific field. Uh, through this health humanities uh, concept, we can build diverse uh, connectivity paths uh, that can uh, concatenate hypothetically lots of areas of science. So it can be an other approach to science classification. Um, so health humanities is a concept, a approach, and um, I will use it like this in the following. Uh, the common is uh, that uh, both of them, I mean, health humanities and bioethics are multidisciplinary, uh, and uh, bioethics uses the tools of philosophy, solving ethical issues that are in connection with the living things and involve uh, involves to its uh, problem solving process, for example, medicine, law, sociology and other social sciences, um, as I previously mentioned. Uh, similar can be said about health humanities also concerning to this structure. It is multidisciplinary too, but it is an approach that collects different fields of sciences uh, under a kind of umbrella view or a collection view. Uh, from this simple comparison, it is visible or uh, it can be visible that the difference uh, can be ident identified too. Um, until bioethics is a field of science, then health humanities is an approach that tries to find the connections and build the bridge between strictly natural sciences and humanities. Um, as we could read in the conference description, one of the aims of teaching and uh, researching health humanities is to provide a kind of balance in uh, physician-patient relationship, but this is partially true for teaching bioethics also. Um, let's see now why is it important broadening the boundaries of uh, bioethics and how can it support the health humanities approach as well. Um, since more or less, but rather more, everybody becomes patient once, uh, so it would be quite useful for non-professionals as well to be aware of the existence uh, of this field of science. And uh, with that, uh, medical care is more complex than uh, we would think uh, by intentionally. Uh, recognizing this and trying to understand each other's aspects uh, through healthcare process, patient and prof patients and professionals also, the whole activity would be more balanced and more fluent with uh, paying attention on, on all of the participants. Uh, so we can realize the importance of uh, biotics in general. Um, and um, this is the point where I would like to uh, take it out of the uh, strict uh, um, course of the university and uh, uh, with the help of health humanities uh, make it uh, more uh, wider accessible for non-professionals as well. Um, and um, at this point, I would like to highlight a few examples uh, and try to show the possible connections, uh, connection points with bioethics. I mean, the health humanities and and uh, bioethics. And this part of my presentation uh, aims to involve different areas of science uh, into the discussion and make bioethics easier available for uh, for uh, non-professional uh, through their tools. And we can mention lots of topics uh, within bioethics. A um, few of them are um, end of life decisions, issues of beginning of life, dilemmas of different types of genetic interventions, um, human experiments or ecoethical questions. If we think uh, about general kind of knowledge, not as professionals, and about how everybody can meet these dilemmas, the most obvious sources are uh, movies and literature. Um, so, um, it's a good connection point and opportunity for um, conveying the information and sharing uh, aspects and perspectives between professionals and non-professionals uh, as well. 
Um, in the following, I will focus on these fields to identify uh, the possible relationships. Uh, with this comparison and analysis, uh, we can build bridges not only between so-called hardcore science and humanities, but between professionals and, and uh, non-professionals at the same time. So let's see the topics and a uh, few sources. Uh, I guess almost all of you uh, saw at least one of uh, or, or watched one of these uh, movies and um, um, I would uh, be at a, a kind of um, process, uh, connecting process uh, to these movies and the upcoming literature. Uh, the core question of abortion is uh, to give birth or don't give the chance to live at all. And uh, here pro-choice and pro-life parts collide with, with each other and both of them could be right in a certain sense. Uh, the mother's right to self-determination is in opposite the, uh, of the embryo's interest and right. And we can see different approaches to this topic in uh, the listed movies. Uh, for example, um, if you highlight uh, Swingwood, uh, lists a quite complete collection of possible approaches of abortion. Um, and for example, the other one, Vera Drake, um, is about a lady who helps uh, mothers to have abortion. Um, she definitely represents a pro-choice and a moderate approach uh, of uh, abortion. Um, and uh, if we uh, go on and focus on literature, we can meet uh, different uh, thinking also and uh, perspectives uh, concerning the abortion. For example, in uh, the Hungarian uh, novel in Kostolainis' work in Edesanna, um, it's about the uh, protagonist's, uh, the maid's uh, case with her pregnancy, and it's um, a, a completely different aspect uh, than, for example, in uh, um, the uh, other um, literature that I mentioned. Uh, the next uh, highlighted topic or uh, part of uh, bioethics um, is uh, genetics. Um, in connection with uh, movies and literature, um, we can see lots of examples that can uh, show, uh, in this case, uh, different aspects also. Uh, but if we would like to uh, emphasize uh, what is genetics about, then uh, genetic interventions can be somatic and germline uh, interventions and therapy or enhancement uh, uh, kind of interventions, um, as uh, the last uh, previous presenter uh, uh, listed also. And um, um, if you watched the movie Gattaca, uh, you can see some examples uh, for that as a uh, um, um, kind of uh, genetic intervention, but it's not a real intervention, but it's about more uh, embryo selection and about uh, um, genetic uh, um, testing before uh, implementation. And uh, uh, we can see an example for uh, natural and selected uh, conception, uh, which uh, leads to social, societal issues in the mixed world and um, uh, discrimination, etc., uh, which is not the um, most idealistic way uh, how we can uh, or how we should uh, imagine our future uh, concerning to the use of uh, gene technology. Um, one, we highlight, uh, for example, the first uh, uh, piece of uh, literature, Aldous Huxley's Brave New World is a uh, dystopic uh, um, uh, scenario about uh, the future um, as well. Uh, and it's not just about uh, genetic interventions, but about cloning uh, as well. Uh, but uh, um, next to these uh, examples, movies and literature, uh, we can use uh, research articles and, and other uh, scientific news that can support to understand the core questions and the core uh, moral issues behind the scenes 
um, in case of genetic interventions, we can mention uh, the uh, case from 2018 uh, when the Chinese uh, researcher Qian Kui He uh, created, uh, yeah, literally created or, or modified um, the germline of uh, uh, twins. Uh, and uh, this intervention uh, was, uh, uh, he made this intervention uh, because he uh, wanted to uh, protect uh, the uh, newborns uh, from uh, HIV and it was a preventive intervention, not a, a treatment, not a, a therapy. Uh, and uh, it was um, an enhancement uh, in a certain way, but uh, these uh, uh, news uh, um, came into the uh, uh, picture after uh, this action. Uh, but that that um, uh, case uh, caused a protest uh, against uh, has act uh, by the scientific community as well, and not just the societal uh, participants or representers. Um, and it, if we go on and uh, mention uh, last bigger topic uh, concerning bioethics and uh, the uh, boundaries, what we can cross uh, through literature and movies, uh, we could mention end of life and end of life care. Uh, the main question in this case is, is should we let to go or have to go the terminally ill patient or uh, we are not allowed to do and uh, to think like this. Um, these examples uh, have uh, different uh, perspectives concerning to that. Uh, for example, in case of you don't know Jack, um, we can um, see um, a doctor, Dr. Jack Kevorkian, who uh, um, helped uh, his patient uh, with assisted suicide uh, to, to die. Um, without suffering or uh, with, yeah, without suffering more, more or less, but he tried to help them to reveal uh, because of their uh, condition. Uh, and uh, these works and the pieces of art sometimes is about answering the question in case of end of life, what does it mean to be dead and what is to be in life uh, in this relation? Um, so we can see here um, at this point as well that uh, we can uh, discuss uh, lots of questions concerning to um, bioethics and uh, we can uh, involve uh, literature and movies at the same time that can uh, that make uh, more uh, available or accessible for everybody uh, these kind of questions without a specific education program. And uh, it is helpful and supporting uh, since uh, it can uh, have to understand uh, for non-professional ones that uh, uh, what is in the uh, background um, at a, uh, through a healthcare uh, activity or uh, through a, a decision-making process. And um, with this um, uh, more informed uh, situation or, or case, uh, the whole healthcare uh, process can be more fluent. Uh, and uh, just uh, one more uh, example uh, through uh, movies and series, uh, and lots of them has, of course, uh, literature background as well. Um, we can mention um, issues of organ transplantation, for example, let, uh, never let me go, or reproduction ethics uh, with the handmaid's tale, or I am mother, or the island, or uh, Google baby. And uh, here uh, uh, in this movie, uh, Sir Gassi uh, is in the focus and uh, how uh, it uh, uh, happened and how uh, can we uh, think about that and uh, uh, what kind of participants are used uh, and uh, involved into this uh, process. Uh, cloning um, and ecoethics uh, can appear as well and general issues of healthcare uh, of course uh, through series. 
which uh, makes it uh, easy, easily available for everybody, these uh, kind of uh, issues. Uh, well, uh, the common in all of the previously mentioned examples uh, is that they are thought provoking and they have to take a step back and see the issues from afar. And um, with this, we can recognize the core questions and dilemmas talking about the cases and it's, uh, it supports to see deeper layers of the decision making process uh, processes and the moral dilemmas um, at the same time. They can have to talk about uh, why and how should we express our desires, who has the right uh, to create regulations, how can we represent the interests of all of the participants, how can we find an acceptable solution, and we can uh, generalize decisions at all or not. Uh, what circumstances influence our thinking, um, as I uh, at the very beginning mentioned that, for example, cultural or religious uh, differences. Um, and uh, we can formulate uh, such questions according to uh, each of the movies, novels, plays, and last but not least, moral issues in general. It depends on uh, from uh, which perspective we approach to the uh, case and uh, what is uh, our intention. Um, and uh, um, optional solution, or not just a solution, an optional way to uh, uh, within the boundaries of bioethics and to uh, to uh, follow this health humanities approach uh, and not uh, in the uh, strict uh, educational system is uh, can be um, uh, for example, uh, community reading groups and movie nights uh, that can be places where these approaches can be in the focus and they give space for such discussions. Um, these events should be led by professionals and uh, uh, rep representatives of humanities uh, to um, reach the uh, conscious target to make more aware of the bioethics as a field of science and its connection with literature and movies as well. Uh, building bridges like this could be useful for the whole healthcare process uh, since everybody gets the opportunity to be informed and familiar with certain issues and the aspects and um, this understanding ability might support the better and better patient physicians relationships as well and much more. Uh, that uh, was what I wanted to share with you uh, concerning the topic. Uh, thank you for your attention.